you can you can sort of um, I think get an appreciation for the connectedness connectedness of uh, the viewing environment and. It's a segue to um, Chris Alexander from Akamai Technologies. Chris, come on out, is going to talk about what uh, that company has branded the hyper-connected living room and talk about some applications and some feats of technology that, that they're bringing to the second screen market. You surprised me coming out from my left, but, but, but yeah. welcome. Do you want to sit uh, here and sure. fire it up? But um, r really, I think you get an appreciation from the, what we just saw from Charles and Coincident. Um, there's power in real-time authoring, there's power in synchronized experiences, and you guys have some, some thoughts and observations about how to sort of ex exploit the possibilities in companion apps. And yeah, so what, what I'm going to share with you is a proof of concept that we built um, that looks at how the second screen trend is likely to evolve, because okay. today there's some, there's some great first step towards it, but it's still hard for consumers. Um, some of the things that we've been hearing is it's, it's difficult, they don't want to always download apps. They'd like to have you know, their profile remembered and associated, right. just as simple as your Apple ID. Uh, and it's also hard for some of the folks in the ecosystem in terms of uh, participating. And so um, we're going to show a little bit about how this could potentially be streamlined in the near term, near term future with technologies available today. Let's flash up, because I want to continue this conversation about the downloading apps thing is interesting, but I think we want to flash a QR code. Yep. We want if to we bring up the, uh, the laptop to, screen. Yeah, let's, let's show that. And I, be, you know, I think that's a common theme you hear from people is that it's cool that there are a lot of these apps out there, but there are a lot of these apps mm -hmm. out there, right? I mean, so yep. that's the conundrum so, that, we're, that we're sort of trying to yep. solve. So, uh, folks so what, do we, what, do we got, what do we got here, the Rorschach? Yep, uh, so, so someone can, you can, anyone in the audience can actually participate in this. This isn't just a demo where I'm going to do it. You can actually participate in this, um, and you can scan in the QR code. Actually, there's a, a URL here. I'll, I'll uh, bring it up as well. Okay, so that Let's code right will back. take us to the URL. And there's a tiny URL at the bottom of the page that you can also bring up. Okay. So what are we looking at? So I've already gone and logged in here. And if we think about how a second screen experience might want to work, um, you'd, you'd ideally want to be able to come in and have your you know, pin interest, essentially, of content. Not, you know, so the first thing is, you know, instead of having thousands of channels, we think right. about psychologically, how, how do people think about their content? They think of it in logical groupings of things they like. And people are visual, so we're showing a, just a very simple visual interface here. Um, for anyone who's been joining in, I see the guest number rising very That's, quickly. People are seeing that on their screens who have yes. dialed in the QR, okay. Yes. Okay. And so um, we'll, uh, we'll actually get started here. All right. So I'm going to start off here with uh, uh, Mission Impossible. And we'll start playing this and give it a minute here. Uh, the the everyone will need to kind of bear with us with the, with the Wi-Fi connection. Some of you, depending on your connection or 3G connection, this may or may not show quickly. So we're we're watching, and right in the beginning here, we see um, IMDb facts. So think of how often you're you're sitting and watching, and who say, is well, that? Who, who is that? Right, right. And you go to IMDb. Well. Wouldn't it be nice if we can just push those things very easily? Huh. Or you see an interesting article of clothing. And wouldn't it be nice if you, know, you could have that piece of clo the clothing or the cool sunglasses and it's here. Right. Or better yet, you can show the actual item or show two or three similar items. Because think of when you go shopping on Amazon and it's two or three similar items that are presented to you. So it doesn't even have to be the actual products or services that you might be seeing you know, within a, a program. And we'll go and do uh, another example here. You can do uh, uh, looking at, again, different types of content here. So we'll switch over to uh, a clip from the Big Bang Theory. Tell me when I can interject with a question. So I have sure. a very fundamental question for you. Go right ahead. How does that know what I'm watching? OK. So we took a very simple approach of looking and saying, uh, what would be an easy mechanism? Because uh, ACR is is hard to implement for anyone who's been doing it. ACR, um, automatic content recognition. recognition. Okay. Um, as well as going and doing things like watermarking. Watermarking is is harder. It's, it takes extra work. So we looked and said, what would be a very easy mechanism? So we said, if you have the content ID and timestamp, you can associate that with a, a URL, and push that out through your your web server. 
very easily. And so we took that as a very simple mechanism to demonstrate, again, how, how could this be streamlined to make it easier for you know, the, the broadcast or the operator to implement this. Okay. What, who, the content ID and timestamp is uh, code that's embedded into a piece of video, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So every, 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 every piece of video, even if it's uh, coming off of a Blu-ray disc, has a content ID okay. and timestamp as it's playing. So we, we looked and said, what's something you don't need to re-encode right. the video? What's something right. that's already there that's easy and is going to be unique for every session as somebody's watching? Okay. And then you're synchronizing or pushing out content related to that moment in time in that yes. movie or television show. Okay. And again, you, you know, the, now some of the possibilities that this opens up, um, you know, there's, there's lots of things that could be possible in terms of how to how to monetize this for the ecosystem. So if you're the the, the broadcaster or the operator, you know, you think in in terms of instead of just inserting an ad to monetize a piece of content, now you basically have inventory against an entire show or event right. or a movie right. which you can place products, services, information against a program and people in their living room already have these devices out, they're already interacting, they're getting psychological cues from things they see on the screen and are thinking about other things and now you have a way to bring something to them that adds value, it's non-disruptive to the, the big screen experience and they're, they're, they're looking to interact anyway, and uh, they're, they're able to do so in a way that right. works for them. So the, um, the, the, the notion of sort of doing away with the need to download 18, two dozen different applications, I mean, at some point, we just can't manage yeah. all those, right? I mean, and I've looked at statistics about how many used apps are um, on the typical iPhone you know, mm -hmm. users play. It's not that many, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a bit of app overload right now. Yeah, and, yeah. And Again, we showed how you can just do this in a simple HTML5 environment where after you've logged in, you can remember your ID, remember your device, and, and tie the experiences between the screens. So uh, as, an, as an end user, it's nice because you don't have to download any app. It just works out of the, the, the browser on your smartphone or your tablet or your, your laptop. Where are you in the kind of go-to-market with this, or what's the, what's the sort of business strategy yeah. for you guys. So this is a proof of concept, right? And, and a bit of it was trying to take and look at what are the trends, how do people want to use this, how would the ecosystem like to simplify things, right? and put, put it together in a way where we thought this is the way things are evolving, so that we can open up dialogue with, with everybody to, to get to a better place. Um, the ability to stream technology to the screens, to sync the screens, right. um, and to deliver the, the actual second screen, that's all technology Akamai has today and we offer. Right. Uh, what we did uh, create as a prototype piece was the translational piece, so the looking at the content ID, the timestamp, and then translating that to a web page. Because when, th when I think of Akamai, I don't think necessarily of a consumer application development mm -hmm. company, but you're all about getting content distributed in yes. interesting ways to interesting places in a very efficient manner. And I guess this sort of feeds that, you know, that, that overarching Yeah, absolutely. We're, yeah, we're, we're a, a cloud platform, and yeah. we, we try to provide a flexible platform where lots of different businesses can deploy the types of services they want to be offering to their end, end customers. It's interesting that you use the term, I think, psychological cues, which are sort of everywhere when you watch, when yeah. you immerse into, whether it's live sports or, uh, or movies. And I guess it's up to somebody else to figure out what the right rhythm and timing is on, on letting those just kind of roll by untouched or, or associating some, yeah. but it's an interesting creative It, it, endeavor, it is, right? and yeah. we're, we're early in the industry yeah. in terms of trying to find what is, what is, what's an appropriate pace yeah. that a consumer can absorb because you, know, you think of it and say, well, every, every, <laughs> every 30 seconds or every minute is probably too much. Yeah. Every five minutes to 10 minutes, maybe not enough. Right. So, you know, what, what is, and it may depend on the type of program or event that they're viewing. Right. Some, some have a different pace, but I think that the, what's interesting is the, the creative interpretations of the technologies that the companies like yours mm -hmm. are bringing to bear is what kind of makes this category really interesting to watch going yeah. forward. So, Chris, thanks for sharing it with us. Um, that's going to conclude our first session on Second Screen. Thank you all for being here. We'll roll up a session on navigation and guides in about 30 minutes. Appreciate it, man. All right. Thank you.